When it comes to any hardship that we face, any battle, any business that we face, <laughs> every single one of us needs a Kome at our side. <laughs> this is my review of Ya Boy Kong Min, a 12 episode series that aired in the spring 2022 anime season. I am so excited to talk about this show because this is an absolute treat for me. So without further ado, let's jump right into this review. Ya Boy Kome or Parapi Kome opens up in the Three Kingdoms era where we follow Kongmi. And unfortunately, at this point, Kome is deathly ill, and it looks like he's going to pass. And as he's passing away, he's really hoping and praying that he'll be reborn in a peaceful world, the world that he and his general and his master really were seeking out. And as things go dark, he opens his eyes to find himself in current times Japan, off in the streets of Tokyo, where everybody's partying and enjoying the festivities of Halloween. And so he quickly thinks, oh, apparently I went to hell because there's demons and everything around me. Well, that sucks. <laughs> he's He's walking around, everybody's kind of pulling him and saying, Oh my gosh, you're Komei, you're dressed up as Komei, you look perfectly like Komei. And eventually he's drugged all the way down to this club where he ends up seeing this singer, Eko, singing on the stage. And he's quickly entranced by her vocals. She kind of dressed up kind of like a demon and so he believes this demon has kind of entranced him. And so off to the side later on, he tells her, I was bewitched by your beautiful music. Well, later on, the singer Eko ends up stumbling upon Komei out on the side of an alleyway drunk. And for some reason decides... <laughs> that she's gonna take him home to take care of him. Again, girls don't do this, this is not a good move. Well, after Komei wakes up, now at Eiko's place, he sort of tries to convince her that yes, he is Komei from the Three Kingdoms era, and he sort of gets a little bit of a catch up from Eiko. She gives him the, the lowdown of technology and everything in a current existence. Kind of a really quick montage to get us, you know, past all that fish out of water aspect. Well, after being bestowed this knowledge from Eiko, he decides to use this knowledge that he has just gained from her to benefit her. Not that it's a transaction, but more of an idea that he seeks to use this knowledge that she's bestowed upon him to make her life better. And how he seeks to do that is to help her become the famous singer that she desires to be. As we find out that Eiko, when she was younger, was sort of giving up on life. And she was pulled in by her manager to this club where she's seen a foreign singer singing and it inspired her to live on. And this inspiration to her became the driving force for her life going forward. She wanted to become a singer just like that person and hopefully inspire somebody else. So now with this famous historical tactician at her side, she's gonna go to the top in the music sphere. So my thoughts on Ya Boy Kong Min. This series is just so good. I really love this show. And it was funny because I think early on, I really didn't want to get my expectations too high. I knew this was a not an original series. This is based off of a manga. And typically with PA works, whenever they do adaptations, it's very hit and miss. Yes, I love things like Eccentric Family, but then there's other shows that aren't so good that they've done. Now, granted, that's not to say that all their originals are perfect either, but I'm sort of hit and miss on PA works. But one thing I can always give them is that the show is going to look fantastic. And sure enough, your boy Kong Min isn't their most beautiful looking show, by far, but it's definitely up there. The character designs are fantastic. The visuals are great. A lot of the stage performance are fantastic. Thank goodness they didn't do CGI at certain points. They decided to just stick with stills whenever they don't want to do the full animation. It looked good, and the characters were fantastically done. And I came into that with that expectation. I'm gonna come into this. This is, this is Eiko, the waifu, singing, and I'm gonna root for her. But what surprised me was that I fell in love with Komei. <laughs> Komei. I didn't think I would, I, I knew he'd be a dork. I figured he'd be a fish out of water story, but it didn't do that. It really twisted it on me. Coming into the show, I had full expectation. This is a fish out of water story about a warring state tactician that is gonna be seeing technology and going, what's a smartphone? It didn't do that. Like I mentioned earlier, the whole fish out of water and getting him caught up with the world itself was done in a really quick montage. Like the very first episode, this little snippet, he gets caught up on everything. It doesn't, doesn't sit there and beat that to death. It's more focused on what Komei is gonna do for Echo and how his mindset and his knowledge in his previous life really does serve to benefit the people around him. He sort of has a different way of looking at things that nobody else has. And I love how they portrayed that in this story. Early on, my attachment to the show, again, surprisingly, was Komei really bringing a different way of thinking to Echo. 
like I mentioned earlier, it's not so much that she gave him knowledge and thus he is required to give her something in return, it's that he's using the knowledge given to him to benefit her. And obviously you're gonna have a lot of moments where Kome is reflecting on how the people that he once served, this great general that he once served, is no longer around. He knows what happened in the end. And that kind of weighs heavily on him. But yet despite that, he has now gained the thing that they were all seeking. A life in a world with peace. And yes, being in a dark place at some point, realizing the losses that he's had, Echo pulls him out of it. And again, this becomes the driving force for him. He seeks so much to make sure that she's a success because he wants everybody else, additionally, to hear that beautiful voice. She bewitched him, and so he wants her to be able to bewitch other people. And yes, there's a little bit in here that's sort of a Three Kingdoms geekdom, <laughs> as every episode sort of opens up with a little bit of a, a history lesson about some sort of tactic that Komei used, and how he ends up using that to essentially help Echo in certain venues. When you have the flow of this one concert venue, having most people getting trapped by this one singer, he's able to figure out some way to sort of detract people over to Echo. And it's always kind of put in some sort of goofy uh, parallels to some strategy he used before. But it's never too much that if you're not a fan of Three Kingdoms, which honestly I'm not, <laughs> that it's going to bog it down. It's always done in an interesting way. And it doesn't stop there. <laughs> like this show just keeps getting better and better. There's a certain point in which Komei decides that Eiko needs somebody at her side. She needs a rapper. And I was honestly not sure what was going on here. Like I wasn't sure if I was liking that it almost felt like the entire show shifted focus to some random dude named Kabe. But honestly, as it started getting into Kabe, I loved that character. Like I loved what they did with that character and what he ends up doing to add a little bit of spice to the story itself was fantastic. I would, I would argue Kabe and his character developments outshine Eiko. So it tells me that this writer is really good at not just throwing in characters for the sake of them being there, but really developing characters as it goes along. These characters have really impactful moments in their story. In just a 12 episode segment, I got so many great character moments out of these characters that I, I it, again, it, it just got better and better. And what shocked me the most was that in the end, at the very end point of the show, you almost get an experience of the brilliant mind of Komei. That everything throughout this entire 12 episodes was almost like a whole strategy built together for this one moment. <laughs> and the way that it pulls it off floored me. The last two episodes were just so phenomenal. <laughs> like the last two episodes of this show was so phenomenal. And it, it literally had me. Like when episode 11 aired, I was like, I know what you're doing here and I hope you pull it off. And sure enough, episode 12 comes out and it nails it. And I was just, I was so pumped. I had to immediately make a video on it. I was that impressed. Ya boy Komei is a mixture of fantastic music, great covers of some really fantastic old songs, great characters, great visuals, some awesome rap too, if you like rap. I'm not a huge fan of rap, but I loved it. These really entertaining moments between the characters. And yes, Komei is a fantastic character that I was, I'm, I'm surprised how much I fell in love with this character. I really do hope that we get another season. I, I kind of figure at the least we could probably get a movie from this. But either way, I really do hope that we get more. Not that I really necessarily need it. I didn't feel, I felt very fulfilled in the end of the show, honestly. But that's my review of your boy Kong Ming. If you like this video, I'd definitely appreciate it if you would go down below and hit that like button. Additionally, leave a comment. Let me know what's thought of this series if you're going to be checking it out. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already. And additionally, if you'd like to support us more, we have a Patreon link, a tips link, and a super thanks button down below. I definitely appreciate everybody that does. And y'all take care.